Denne podcasten presenteres i samarbeid med Kopshop og Ving. Välkommen till Supporterklubbens podcast nummer 4. Vi är er tillbaka i Norge efter en sviptur över dammen och idag så har vi följande goda saker att komma med. Vi ska prata med legenden Phil Thompson. Vi ska prata med David McDiamond som är er ansvarig för Liverpool Football Clubs Foundation College inne mot vanskligt barn i Liverpool område och så ska vi köra en konkurrensvinnare från sist. Vi ska ha en ny konkurrens och vi ska till och med få tid till en annan glasak som kommer senare. Välkommen. Det var en glädjens dag i Kristiansand här om dagen. Selveste Phil Thompson kom till byen, närmare bestämt till Kristiansand Livebirds sitt femårs jubileum och skulle hålla ett lite föredrag. I förkant av det så tog vi självklart praten med Selveste Thompson. Phil, welcome to Norway again. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah. First, uh, can you tell us tell us a little bit about the Norwegian supporters? Uh, I think we are a bit strange, you know. You think that you think the Norwegian supporters are strange? That's strange. Why? Because of the the love for Liverpool Football Club or the love for Premier League football? I don't. I don't find that strange. I just no. they have. It's always like a dual thing, isn't it? They have the Norwegian yeah. team. They have the Premier League yeah. team. Maybe the other way around. Premier League team first, and then Norwich. I don't find it strange at all. I think it's a great, great passion yeah. for the football. But you know, despite the results and everything, we are still supporting Liverpool. I think it's a marvelous story. You know, Always. it is a marvelous story because when you think of it, we have, we haven't won the, the Premier League title for more than twenty years. Yeah. We have won things in between that. Um, especially Istanbul, which was one absolutely magnificent night. But I do find it quite extraordinary of the support, the passion, the commitment, the love for Liverpool Football Club. When you think what we haven't done and we're still searching for a great team. Like I had great, fantastic time being with Gerard Houllier. We did really well then. We had fantastic times in Cardiff winning, winning trophies. And then Rafa Benitez had some wonderful times. But yes, there's been lean times as well. So it has been wonderful to see that we still haven't lost that support in Norway when you consider the two biggest teams are Liverpool and Manchester United. So well supported. But supporters-wise in Norway, there's not much difference in between the two of them. So it is, it's absolutely fascinating to see that support still for our football club. Yeah, it is. Uh, as we speak, we, we have had a terrible match against Southampton mm. um, and we are seventh in the league but do you th- still think there are any chance for European matching next season? Well if, if I'm looking at it do I really think that there's a chance of Champions League football? Mm. I, a lot will happen a lot will happen is how we play and how we show up that's why it was so disappointing uh, the Southampton results because we'd had such a good run before mm. before that so we were really thinking that with a few results going our way we've still got because we've got a good run in so we still have a chance of Champions League football we're still there and then we have the poll results down at uh, St Mary's and that is what's disappointing about the team we had a good run we lost to Aston Villa we had a good run we lost to West Brom yeah. so that's the inconsistencies of the side so we've really looked and the main thing is is Champions League football the Europa League is okay but I think we are Liverpool Football Club and we've got to aim higher so it's got to be do I think that we can finish in a Champions League spot it's a very outside chance but we have to still believe in that not only we have to have our results going the right way other teams have to falter and Spurs went and faltered they were in third place Mm. they faltered so it's important that we get some results which all cross over and it doesn't seem to happen for us too much is that results go our way from other teams as well as ourselves what do you think will be the aims for Brendan Rodgers this summer I think I think his aims is consolidation Mm. Um, our big aim is to try and convince Luis Suarez that he will remain at the football club we as Liverpool need star quality 
We need stars in our team. Yes, we have Steven Gerrard. Stevie is 32 years of age. Cara is retiring. So we need to convince Louis that his future is at Liverpool Football Club. So we have to we have to try and show Louis with the signings that we're going to make in the summer is that commit to Liverpool. We have a plan, we have a vision of where our football club is going. So then Louis, by the time the end of August comes, he says to himself, this is the club that I want to be at. And then we have to have the results to go with it, to make him and convince him that come January, is that he knows that we're on the right lines. So it's down to the players that we're going to sign. This plan, this Brendan Rodgers plan, we have heard a lot, of, a lot about it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in it? I think we all have to believe in Brendan's plan. Yeah. I think that's... It, it, we have made too many changes to our managerial. We don't want to go like other clubs where we're changing our manager when we have six bad games. No. We lose six bad games. And a lot of fans are like that. At home in Liverpool and in England, it's we look at it and we go, oh. and then the, the papers, people writing into the papers, people on all the blogs, they're all having a moan about things and is he good enough, is he not good enough. We have to back the manager because we don't want to keep going like with the foot. Six, six bad results change. So it's important that we stick. I think all of next season, we have to give him our belief and our passion and make sure that he does have a good chance to do it. But that then comes back to how does that work? Yeah. And it's not just with Brendan Rodgers, it's then with the ownership of our club. Are they going to back Brendan in the transfer market and make it and show Brendan that they are convinced by him? And then it comes back to Luis Suarez. Is Luis going to be convinced? And I know I'm making a, a big thing about Luis Suarez because he's he's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful talent. Absolutely. Uh, in the end, can you tell us a story about Jamie Carragher? A story about a Jamie legend. Carragher? You have something. He is a true legend. And being at Liverpool Football Club as assistant manager with Jamie Carragher, I've seen him develop and how much he's got a passion for football, passion for Liverpool Football Club. And I just remember in the early days when he played right back, he played left back at the club and people, again, phone-ins, um, writing in to newspapers saying he wasn't good enough in this, but he had a great passion. And we were playing them left back and I can remember every day before training, he would have a ball and he would be practicing with his left foot, committed to, if I'm going to play left back, I'm going to make sure the management knows that it is. And he was like that. He was, he was a, a wonderful char character. And you think, is it on the field that we're going to miss him, or is it off the field? It's as much off the field because in and around the dressing room, he is so good, and he's passionate about it. But he's also funny. He's humorous. He keeps the banter going in the dressing room. So he'll be missed as much there as he will do on the pitch. Yeah. I just think he's a bad memory, Jamie Carragher's. I'll be that time in Istanbul and I'm speaking to Jersey do there and I'm doing it and for the penalty kicks do a grab like do a grab like do a grab like Jersey couldn't understand a word what he was saying he still did it but I think it was only what Jersey wanted to do because Jersey always said I didn't understand the word what he said Det er ingen hemmelighet at Liverpool gjør mye for barn og vanskeligstilt mennesker rundt omkring i L4-regionen i Nordvestengland. David McDiamond er ansvarlig for Liverpool Foundation College og tok en rask prat med oss i anledning vårt besøk til Liverpool. Right, David, uh, we're here at the Liverpool Museum where you are currently having a stand to promote basically Liverpool FC Foundation and your football college. Could you briefly explain uh, what that's about? Yeah, it's, a, it's part of the LF, Liverpool Football Club's community department and um, we've developed a, a college for 16 to 19 year olds. We have a work with local youngsters to get them qualifications, academic qualifications. Um, where they can go on to university, they can look into employment, uh, we're looking for coaching jobs for them. But as part of the college, the big carrot for it obviously is, you know, the attraction is using the club's brand and a great image in the city. So it attracts lots, lots of uh, local youngsters. Now we model it as the same as LFC uh, Academy. That was the idea from uh, Dave Rowe. And um, basically they'll come in and study of a morning and then of an afternoon they'll train. And they train, um, you know, as the academy players, the scholars would at LFC Academy, 
Uh, so we've got first class coaches, lads who work in the community department uh, for Liverpool and also with, in Kirby. Um, the likes of uh, Mag Sheeran, Tom Coleshaw. Mag Sheeran, who's performed professionally, he's played for Oldham City, Norwich City, Oldham Athletic, sorry, Norwich City and um, Queen's Park Rangers, amongst a number of clubs. So a great uh, bunch of coaches there working with the lads. So they work on the football and they work on uh, the coaching qualifications. They play in a, um, a league every Wednesday afternoon against other colleges. So they all come, they're all given the football kit, um, the LFC football kit. Uh, the tracksuit, so it makes them feel really proud. How many kids are you talking about here? Well, at the moment, we've got 65 on, on our roll, and it, it's been a massive su uh, success. Uh, we're going to Madrid in May, taking them on a tour. Um, again, you know, as part of you know the, their development as people, not only as you know academically, but you know to really develop them socially. And it's you know geared towards local youngsters uh, to you know broaden their horizons. So basically, the club is helping kids who have well nothing and, and offer them education and help to, to, to grow and develop as a, as a modern human being. Uh, that's it. it, you know it's aimed at all youngsters, it, you know we target certain groups but then it's, it's open to all you know so we're, we'll target to children from all over the city from different uh, walks of life and bring them all together through the medium of football and football does that it's obviously very very powerful so you know um, historically Children from uh, youngsters from certain parts of the city mightn't get along, um, but the football breaks all them barriers down as you used to really bring them together, uh, build friendships, and build them as people and give them opportunities for life. Next year, we're going to the Dallas Cup in America, the biggest uh, international football tournament. So, those who are lucky enough to be chosen to go there, you know, it's a great incentive to be involved in. Obviously, many of the international uh, fans may not be aware of the local activities for the community that Liverpool Football Club puts out there. Uh, but do you think um, this can help uh, change the way modern football is perceived? It's not all about money, great cars, and uh, and uh, high salaries and high tickets. Yeah, well, I say this event is amazing. Anfield, and without the fans and the people of Liverpool, the club is nothing. Uh, football is nothing without the you know the true fans and. The community departments and the foundation, the LFC foundation, what we're part of, that's what it's all about really. And it uh, should never be left, uh, lose sight of that. The, the foundation goes worldwide, uh, working, uh, the teams are off all the time. They have designated staff working with people around in Qatar, to, um, in Africa, you know, Asia, all over Europe. They go over and targeted schemes working with um, specific groups. So it's, a, it's an international foundation, basically. Well, it is, yeah. Obviously, a lot of the core of the work is based at home, but then they choose like certain pieces of work to target around the world, um, to you know, to have an impact on, have a positive impact on worldwide, and, and they do a fantastic job with that. Thank you very much. Vi lovte en aldri så liten glasak, og noen av dere har kanskje allerede fått det med dere på Facebook eller på liverpool.no allerede. Men det her gjør altså en stor vervekampanje akkurat nå, og vi tar en liten kikk på hva du kan stikke av gårde med hvis du deltar. Da er det konkurransetid. I forrige podcast-episode så kunne du vinne den her, Being Liverpool. Dette var bildet vi skulle finne fram til. Og vinneren er, som du ser på skjermen, følgende gladbass. Gratulerer! Og så skal vi over til en ny konkurranse, som alltid. Denne gangen så har vi med oss Ragnhild Lund Ansnes sin lekkere bok, Liverpool Helter, Liverpool Heroes. Og alt du trenger å gjøre er, som alltid, se på dette bildet. Kan du gjette fra hvilken kamp dette er tatt? Hvis du kan dette, så kan du stikke av gårde med denne boka. Og du sender ditt svar til post at liverpool.no, så kårer vi en vinner som seg hør og bør. Det var alt vi hadde i denne utgaven. Jeg håper du har kost deg masse, og at du gir oss kommentarer som alltid. Vi ses veldig snart. You will never walk alone.